You know that feeling when you've been somewhere and you just can't wait to go back? The giddiness you feel when you think about it. It could be anywhere. Your favorite store, vacation spot, or even local coffee shop. It really doesn't matter. I think you all know what that feeling is in one way or another. Well, mine is definitely Costa Rica. The stunning scenery, beautiful beaches, and incredible herpeta fauna all make for an incredible vacation spot and herping area. I was last there in July 2019, and ever since, I have been dreaming of going back. I didn't know what day that would be until one day in mid-September, I was working in the reptile room, and I got a call from my good friend Dion. He asked if I was free to chat about an opportunity. Okay, yeah. What I didn't realize is that opportunity would lead me back to one of my favorite places on earth. Awesome. Welcome to Costa Rica Herping Expedition 2021, brought to you in part by CR Wild. The goal of this series is to bring you along as one of the amigos. From getting that was stung it. by bullet ants to chopping pipas open with a machete, no, no. almost dying on the side of a mountain, to feeding a tiny little salamander on the mossy side of a tree. From having an insect stuck in your brain. All right, guys. So Dion just got absolutely smoked by a moth in the ear. He's to gone. finding one of your dream species of reptiles. You guys, right here we have a Bothraecus lateralis. It really will be as if you're right there with us. However, in order to do so, there will be several episodes coming out in order to highlight the trip to its fullest. So make sure to keep a lookout for the rest of the episodes. Today we'll be tackling the first two days on the Caribbean side of the country, as well as the cloud forests of Costa Rica. Okay, okay, let's not get too ahead of ourselves though. I still have to pack for the trip and we leave in the morning. After waking up at 3.30 a.m. to be at the airport by 5 a.m. and on the plane by 8 a.m., there was a whole headache that I'll save you guys the details of. We ended up landing in Costa Rica at around 1 p.m. After emerging from the deep, dark trenches that was customs, we ended up meeting up with our guide, Christian, and embarking on our two and a half hour journey through the mountains to Securis. The long drive allowed us to take in the incredible mountainsides teeming with lush green growth and seeing the occasional wildlife as well. As we were nearing Securis, we ended up making a pit stop at the Rio Sucio, which is actually where one very pristine looking river met with a very murky looking one. And you can see the results. Now by the end of the drive we were becoming quite famished, so we ended up stopping for a little bit of a bite to eat, where we enjoyed some delicious casados, is I believe how it's called, correct me if I'm wrong, and then proceeding to make the rest of the trip to where we'd be staying for the next three nights. Once we arrived, unfortunately, we did not have time to enjoy our humble abode. We ended up just throwing our bags on the beds, getting ready with our herping gear, and heading out for the night to go herping. And what a memorable night it would be. Before we dive too deep into the first night's herping and the expedition as a whole, I want to celebrate the unsung heroes of the trip, our guides. These guys were all BAMS. We couldn't have seen half the amount of things as we saw without them. They were tracking tree frogs for hours while we thought we were just wandering aimlessly hiking through the mountains. They were the ones who could tell a species just by the color of its eye shine from like 20 meters away. Thank you, gracias, to Christian. Roberto, Cusco, and Eduardo 
for the keen eyes and good laughs, even though we couldn't speak your language. With that said, we can get back to the first night in herping, and one that we'll certainly never forget. Fuzzy and hard. It was a fairly innocent night of herping, where we did some road cruising, where we saw what I believe is a kinkachu running along the canopy with some fruit in its mouth, acting out cute. Shortly after that, we parked and began walking along the roadside where we found some incredible frogs, including this glass frog, as well as some masked tree frogs. Then we found the first of many bullet ants. The bullet ant can grow to over an inch long and is infamous for an incredibly painful sting, commonly claimed to be the most painful sting of any insect, up there with a couple wasps. I'll let Dylan take the wheel from here though. So right now the guys have this, what do we call it? It's, it's not a wager, but everybody's... We're deciding if we do it. If, if, if someone is willing to if you get do it, stung I give by you, a bullet. I give you a banana. <laughs> Yo, that's a sick deal, bro. You're never gonna get that opportunity again. <laughs> well, needless to say, we figured a banana would not be worth the pain, and on we went. Or so we thought. We then stumbled across a juvenile fertilance, or locally referred to as a tarsipelo. The fertilance here is right in front of us, and we're keeping a safe distance because, as you may or may not know, this is a fairly venomous species but what a beauty to be able to experience seeing in the wild it's just a true treasure such an amazing animal shortly after one of our guides called to us that there was a snake and we had to come quick so we all ran over only to find what is locally referred to as a cicabeza du tortuga or commonly referred to as a false coral snake these guys are not venomous and are not dangerous to humans, unlike the actual coral snakes that you can find in these areas. To me, it really was like a New World Boyega. Due to its body shape and its movement, plus that head, it just looked very similar in my opinion. Of course, that's because I own Boyega though. It certainly was one of the coolest snakes that I've never heard of. What's going on? Oh, I'll Hang tell on. you what's going on. Uh, Mike fell in a forest and made it sound like a tree was falling. Yeah. And then we found a bunch of snakes, and then uh, we're trying to coax a snake to come down this way. And uh, my battery died. So thank you for filming this. And I lost my flashlight. You did lose your flashlight. This isn't Besides mine. falling, I'm good. Thanks for that enlightening update, you guys. Shortly after that, Christian pointed out a freshly laid clutch of red-eyed tree frog eggs. So less than a month from the time that they're laid on the underside of a broad leaf to the time that they turn into tadpoles, and then they're gonna fall into a puddle or a stream or whatever they're laid above, and then they're gonna turn into tadpoles. The egg discovery really kicked off our hunt for some adults, and not long after we found this beauty. When you think Costa Rica, usually one of few animals comes to mind, you know, sloths, etc. But the red-eyed tree frog. Oh, that was it. Really? You alright? What was it? It had to have been the bullet ant. It was fuzzy and hard. Right yeah, there. right there. That was it. Oh. Right there. I got stung in the neck. We'll keep you guys updated on if I live or you know perish in the in the jungles of Costa Rica due to this this guy right here. Just in case anybody's wondering, the pain was like holding a lit match against the back of my neck for about eight hours. You know, just in case anybody was wondering, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't want to talk too much about me. Let's get back to the crown jewel of the rainforest, the red-eyed tree frog. They really are such an iconic, beautiful looking frog. Our first night's expedition ended with this beauty who was eyeing the red-eyed tree frog eggs. This is a neotropical blunt-headed snake or the blunt-headed tree snake. These guys have a massive geographical range across the entire neotropics. They commonly predate on frogs as well as their eggs and the odd lizard or two. It certainly was a pleasure to wrap up the first night's herping trip. Even with my neck feeling like it was on fire, it really was a pleasure to see these guys and to end off the night on this note. After that, we returned to our casa and all promptly had a shower and passed out.
Before we dive into day two, a quick word from our good friend and sponsor of this video, Christian from CR Wild. Sierra Wild is a company in Costa Rica that will will like to promote reptile and amphibian conservation in in the tropics through science, education, and tourists, of course. Uh, we have Taylor May Herpin Expedition Night Tour. Anything you need in Costa Rica, just click the link below. So it's the beginning of day two. Are you feeling it? It's a video. Mm. I'm feeling okay after last night. I, I guess you guys would have saw it. I got stung by the bullet ant. So uh, I actually don't feel it at all. Like it's like it didn't even happen. Hey, I'll take it. It was a, uh, it was an experience, and I can say it happened. So. While we enjoy some peepas, allow me to show you some insane things that we found across the property, starting with Nufaga pumilio. These guys are called Ufaga Pumilio because they are obligate egg feeders. So in the wild, this little guy, I assume, will be calling to the female to bring her over to their tadpoles where they feed them eggs. These guys, you can't raise in captivity without the mother's eggs. I have other locales of the Ufaga at my place. Incredible dart frog, and I'm so happy to see one. As we're continuing the flavor train tour across the entire grounds that we are staying on and devouring some delicious sweet limes, we came across this beautiful yellow spotted night lizard. This is a Lepidophilma flavimaculatus, and it is the yellow spotted night lizard. These guys are really cool. They can be parthenogenetic as well as they live primarily underground. What's really cool about them while they're underground is that they have one entry and one exit burrow. We happen to find this guy and he is just basking out on this log. Stunning creature and very rare. <laughs> Ouch. Um, are Hold you still on, rolling? Adams. Uh -oh. Jumping around hey, behind Adam, you. Hey can you jump around over there? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, man, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. Another incredible thing about these guys okay. is their bite yeah. strength. This guy might not look all that impressive, but he'll make you scream. Shortly after finding the night lizard, we ended up finding this gorgeous Phyllobates lugubris. Man, they're just such beautiful frogs. I really did wish they're much larger cousins. The Phyllobates terribilis was found in Costa Rica. I don't think that'll be happening anytime soon. And just as we were about to get in the truck to go get our boots, we happened to see this gorgeous male Gonatodes albogularis, otherwise known as the yellow-headed gecko. These guys are fairly common to see across all of Costa Rica, but man, it was just such a treat to find something that you see in the hobby fairly commonly in the wild and somewhere that you really wouldn't expect to find it. After visiting several stores across securities, we ended up finding one little shop that had some rubber boots that we so desperately hey needed. Guys, what are we doing right now? Getting rubber boots. I, I already got my rubber boots. You these already guys, did? These guys need rubber boots. Well, they come. I'm getting the rubber boots. Yeah, they're for rubber boots because the ladies, they didn't bring their... While we were gone, there was a bit of a feast being prepped up at the casa. This meal that we're about to devour will prove critical to fuel us on our hardest hike of the entire trip. I certainly was not ready for it. My outer shape ass has hardly completed any hike ever, and this was by far the hardest one I've ever completed. While we're on the topic of herping, why don't we just hop into the night's festivities? As we were walking up these grassy slopes, allow me to set the scene for some of you. It's 6.30 p.m. on a Sunday evening. You and your buddies are getting ready to go on a herping night. It's 28 degrees Celsius and 95% humidity, and your guide looks at you with a smug look on his face and says, we should be back at the truck in five to six hours if all goes well. And snap, you're back to reality, and now we can go talk about ants. You guys, right here we have some Atta leafcutter ants, an incredible genus of ants that, as you guys have probably seen, they'll go up, cut leaves down, bring them down to their burrows, 
where they will feed their queen with it. They grow mushrooms, a bunch of really cool things, as well as if you look carefully on the leaves, a lot of times there's actually a smaller leaf cutter ant on it. It's to keep the leaf safe and void off any predators that might come and lay eggs on the leaf in order to protect their queen. Now, when I was talking earlier, I forgot to mention that those five to six hours of hiking was up and down nearly vertical 90 degree slopes covered in mud. Hence Adam's wager. <laughs> What we have here is a really cool trail. We're finding very cool stuff, but like what you just saw, that is kind of the theme of the night, falling down. First one to fall down has to get bit by a bullet ant, and uh, Mike is not immune. Needless to say that this hike almost killed me on the way back up. Mike, how you doing back there, bro? Awful. Awful? Okay, awful. But that's enough complaining from me. I was just trying to provide some hindsight perspective to this video. I mean, take a look at how steep these slopes are. It's insane. Grabbing on trees to stop from slipping down. Our guides even told us, you know what, walk with your heels because that way when you slip, your heels will regain traction before any other part of you and will stop your fall. Regardless, let's go find some cool herbs and maybe some creepy crawlies as well. And it looks like Dion is starting it off strong with this. Beautiful tarantula out maybe hunting near its burrow. You can see there's little mites crawling on it kind of sad but hopefully they don't harm the animal too much it seems very healthy and then I'm also very close to a line of very close to a line of leaf cutter ants sometime after finding that tarantula our guides finally found what they had been tracking all night guys in front of me there is the Cruzio hyla silviae one of the most striking frogs in the Costa Rican jungle this guy is a canopy frog that Happened to be down near the ground, so we're thankful that he's here. You guys might be familiar with this genus from my channel, the Cruiser Hylocraspidopus. This is their, essentially, Costa Rican cousin. Beautiful frog. The rest of the night was quite plentiful in terms of the organisms we found. From seeing a pumilio in the middle of the forest, not really near any bromeliads or anything, it kind of had me questioning just how we're keeping them in captivity, but that's a conversation for another time. There's also this fantastic looking Pristimantis cruentus, a gorgeous, almost toad-like looking frog, even a whip scorpion on the side of a tree. This thing was massive. And one of our old friends, the masked tree frogs, back again to say hello. Even this Taylor's large-scaled lizard, I'd never heard of before, but it really reminds me of the tropical girdle-tailed lizards, or just anything from the Cordelius genus. Even to something as conspicuous as this Coniophanes fissidens, it almost reminds me as one of the African house snakes, but a new world version of it. And to top it all off, we also saw our first Onycophora, otherwise known as a velvet worm. And our last herp of the night was this gorgeous Leptodira species that we saw hanging out over a giant pond filled with frogs. I think he was thinking it's about time for a meal. After a lengthy hike and plenty of incredible herps, began the journey back. It's honestly something that I'm a little embarrassed by because I truly did feel like I was really holding back the group. My cardio was just simply not good enough to do it all in one stretch like everybody else. I do have to give credit where credit is due and Dion really helped me out. He ended up taking my backpack on, off my jungle. back. We're on our way back. Our companions are feeling it. Mike, how you doing back there, bro? Awful. Awful? and hiking it up himself. And everybody else in the group was very supportive, ensuring me that no, it wasn't me, I wasn't holding everybody back, you know, we all just take things at our different paces. And it's actually nice for them to have a break every now and then. I greatly appreciate the support, you guys. It was much appreciated. I'm thrilled that I ended up finishing the hike. Just like every other time, the second we got back to the house, we did the exact same thing. Just showered and passed out. That is going to do it, guys. We have reached the end of the first episode of the Costa Rica and Herping Expedition. If you don't want to miss an ounce of our trip, make sure you click that subscribe button and ding the notification bell next to it, turning on those post notifications because there's so much more that you won't want to miss. There are Valorite glass frogs in Amplexus that are mating on a rock. You guys, right in front of me is a velvet worm, an Onycophora. They are an invertebrate, but they're neither an insect
gentlemen, what are we eating here? I would love to hear what you guys' thoughts are of this video in the comments down below, so make sure you engage down there. I reply to every single comment. And I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. We'll catch you later.